Hello again, and welcome back to another Star Citizen Did You Know? I'm your host, Professor Derps, and in today's lecture, we will be going over a species known as the Vandal and how they were discovered, as well as the threat that comes with them in the future. To start, what are the Vandal? The Vandal are a spacefaring, bipedal, sentient race of aliens that was first discovered in the year 2681 CE Standard Earth Years. Their appearance is that of a reptilian humanoid that stands at average 8 feet tall in their adulthood. From a pure anthropological standpoint, the Vandal behave like classic hunter-gatherers that will rarely interact with those outside of their clan, even with others of their own species. Despite this, it is possible for multiple clans to work together, as discovered when one of their carrier ships was captured by our military. This ship, designated X-12, went through a DNA analysis which uncovered a wide range of genetic diversity, implying social interaction beyond the single horde. It is also worth noting that every Vandal body found at this point in time had been male, further suggesting that there must be a central convergence of Vandal groups where mating and other activities take place. Following the clan theory, renowned anthropologist Dr. Arlo Gellis released a study exploring Vandal social dynamics in which he hypothesized that Vandal organized themselves within self-sufficient groups rather than adopting a species-wide government. As interaction with the Vandal settled into a prolonged series of light skirmishes, the theory became more and more accepted and as such, it is probably impossible to make peace or establish a diplomatic relationship with the Vandal since there is no cohesive civilization. And while we have not completely decoded their language yet as of today, the University of Moscow located on Terra recently released a study on how they communicate, which combines guttural words and gestures along their luminescent skin, which changes colors according to the mood of the individual. The Vandals seem not to care much for religion or documentation, as nothing to this date has shown evidence of the behavior. This theorized that unlike humanity, the Vandal cares not for the past and will not make an effort to remember those of their species in which great feats were completed. Despite this, there is one tradition that exists throughout all of the Vandal, being once a child reaches adulthood, typically around 13 standard earth years, they will be banished from their family. But before they go, the parents will fashion a knife for their child which will be their only possession as they set out into the universe. Consequently, these knives are treasured possessions that they keep for the rest of their lives. Their biology has been kept mostly secret by the UEE, but those who partook in previous skirmishes against them have observed Vandal pulling themselves along the surfaces of ships in the vacuum of space without any protective gear and with no signs of distress. Unfortunately, this is around the extent of knowledge we have regarding the Vandal over the last 271 years as they follow a strict suicide doctrine, which consists of scuttling their ships when in danger of being captured. Now that we know what the Vandal are, let's go over some of the key history in our timeline which has led to the war in the first place. The first contact with humanity, as you all know, was very violent. On August 9, 2681, a group of Vandal Raiders attacked Dell Township on Artemis, located in the Orion system, killing at least 638 people and abducting one human. Unusually, the raiding group looted a lot of worthless items and avoided more important ones. The Orion system was the farthest human world discovered at the time under the project Far Star in an attempt to expand. At first, the Vandal were treated as mere annoyances by the Messers as subsequent raids occurred over a scattered number of years. However, in the year 2712, that changed in what became known as the Battle for Orion, which resulted in the UEE's abandonment of the entire system. On February 2nd, a Vandal clan, appearing in high numbers, decimated the UEE fleet, which was posted in the territory at the time, forcing a retreat of all military assets to the Caliban system. The clan, led by a kingship, bombarded Orion 3 with antimatter bombs before proceeding to reap all planets within the solar system using what we now call harvesters. Harvesters are ground vehicles that are typically deployed by Vandal carriers which recycle just about every form of matter, converting it into an unknown biological paste-like resource, which is then used as the foundation of their technology. These harvesters also perform as mobile factories that spread terror throughout the galaxy, taking everything from starship wrecks to the bones of fallen soldiers, ultimately feeding the very enemy that they were attempting to defeat. These were first documented after the UEE had retreated from the Virgil system following the attack on Virgil 1. 
In these events, millions of civilians on Virgil were left to die and the planet was left inhospitable. In an attempt to stop the violence and open diplomatic communications, the Vandal were invited to take part on the ARC program in 2806, but the negotiations had failed due to the communication block. After years of military buildup and small skirmishes taking place over the borders of human territory, the Vandal had struck again, this time pushing into the Caliban system on the year 2884. This caused a widespread panic throughout the system and led to a very hasty and mass evacuation of most of the system inhabitants. And on the day of July 7th, the invasion commenced in which a two-day battle was fought throughout the system. Caliban 2 was first met with antimatter bombs wiping out any remaining resistance before dropping their harvesters to chew through the remnants of the cities left behind. The only military forces within Caliban at the time was the 88th UEE Navy Logistics Support Squadron, who was severely under-equipped and outnumbered by the Vandal heavily. Despite this, the 88th refused to leave the system, opting instead to try and buy as much time as possible for the civilians to escape. Many were able to flee due to the brave sacrifice from the squadron, but unfortunately, the reinforcements were not able to arrive in time, resulting in complete annihilation for the defending force. A lone crewman was the only survivor. The following day, on July 9th, reinforcements of the UEE entered the system to engage the full Vandal fleet but was unable to hold out against the onslaught. On July 23rd, 2884, after heavy casualties, Orion and the rest of Caliban's system are lost to the Vandal and humanity was forced to abandon the system. In honor of the 88th, the unit was retired and named the Lost Squad. The date is June 11th, 2945. Years of silence had gone by without any major pushes from the Vandal forces. Suddenly, around the time of 0240, a distress call goes out system-wide, sent from the civilian refueling station Diamond Gems Fuelporium, located near Oberon 6. The 341st Squadron, having already been on patrol, was sent to investigate, only arriving a few minutes later. Upon arrival, they found the station to be completely destroyed with no survivors to be found. Information pulled from the data archives of the station revealed that 0236, two Vandal bombers designated voids had entered within range of the station's proximity sensors. After detection, the owner of the station, Citizen Jim Hester, initiated emergency procedures which triggered the distress call. The bombers had unleashed a devastating amount of missiles and boarding crafts before any of the escape pods were able to be launched, resulting in the deaths of all 56 humans on board. At the time, Naval High Command had written this off as another raid rather than an incursion into UEE space. Oberon was not a UEE-controlled system either, as there was not many humans living in the system at the time due to the Titania terraforming failures in the 2600s, which also influenced the decision of the UEE not to investigate it any further. Come to find out, this decision would cost humanity gravely. We interrupt your spectrum programming for urgent breaking news. We have just learned of a major vandal raid in the Vega system. Details are still coming in, but we have received early comms indicating the Navy Border Fleet is currently engaged with a massive vandal force outside of our army's orbit. No firm word yet on what could be heavy military and civilian losses. To repeat, there's been a large-scale vandal incursion into the Vega system, directly above Vega 2. Not much is known at the moment. We have been trying to establish contact with our local affiliate, but we have had no success so far. We suspect that the array grid has been severely damaged in the fight. Next thing I knew, I opened my eyes to find the city awash in flame and smoke. A body, charred beyond recognition, stared vacantly at me. As I pushed myself away, I realized that everything was muffled. Like the world's volume had been turned down. I shakily got to my feet turned to look at what knocked me out. It... It was a crumpled aurora, still smoldering from plasma blasts. I could taste the ash in my throat. My eyes burned from the thick clouds of pulverized concrete and smoke as I stumbled down McElroy. With each step, the ringing in my ears subsided. 
know where I was going. Neither did anyone else. They were scattered. Crazed. Scared. People slumped on the floors, covered in dust and blood. Screams and sobs echoed over the shouts of medics and doctors as they struggled on the smoke to save lives. It was tough to tell who was dead and who wasn't. The Vandal had struck again, this time in mass. Their forces, led by a kingship, jumped into the Vega system. Bombs fell from the sky, killing many, as well as some fighting above from private-owned space vessels attempting to defend themselves. The second fleet was already engaging the main hostile forces above, but a lot of damage had already been done. A grueling three hours later, the explosions in the sky started to finally come to a halt. And when morning came, the fires were still burning out of control and the communication networks were still down. The battle had been won and the Vandal forces had been repelled, but at such a heavy cost of human life. It's said that Admiral Bishop, the hero of Vega, visited the planet below to survey the destruction personally, despite the advisories. What Admiral Bishop saw that day is what prompted them to give the renowned speech during an emergency session of the UEE Senate. Urging the United Empire of Earth to go to war with the Vandal officially, only a mere five days later. Soon after Bishop's speech, the public opinion showed their support by rejecting the Polo Initiative, which was originally to cut military spending by 10%. With the full support of the High Command as well, it was enough to persuade Imperator Kostigan to declare a full-out war against the Vandal. With an official declaration, Operation Mandrake soon went underway when the UEE received credible intelligence regarding a Vandal clan preparing to mount a second attack on the Oberon system. Concerned about the possibility, Admiral Bishop took it upon themselves to detach a strike team to survey and sweep the system for signs of attack. The difference was that this time, they were prepared. What the Vandal didn't know that was Project Quadeen had just completed in the wake of the first Vandal attacks. This top secret project was originally put on hold due to the financial limitations of the UEE before the declaration, but was rushed into action soon after. Coming off the line in October of 2946, the flagship of the UEE, designated a Retribution class Super Dreadnought, was unveiled to the public as a kingship killer and put into service with the 65th Battle Group. The ship spanned a length of 2,700 meters and a height of 400 meters, fitted with multiple 130 millimeter ship busting railguns designed by Baring. It came to no surprise that the Vandal raiding fleet was completely decimated, scoring Admiral Bishop his first major victory. While there was no kingship present, it was accounted that multiple enemy capital ships were destroyed in the fight. For the first time in its history, Oberon had seen victory, bringing hope to the inhabitants that they may recover one day. And while the retribution has since moved on, a large fighting force still remains in the system, charged with protecting it from further Vandal incursions. With that, this brings us closer to current day, where the UEE is prioritizing the security in any system bordering the Vandal territory. Militia memberships have significantly increased among the borders, allowing for self-defense forces to be built and maintained by civilians after the Militia Mobilization Initiative was passed in late 2946. This bill also allowed ship manufacturers to sell and produce what was previously military-only class vessels and weaponry to the public to prepare themselves for future conflicts. In addition, a government subsidy was offered to discount the bulk purchase of ships. UEE Navy tactical experts even created specific pre-designed ship teams to aid in fleet formations for the civilian defense forces. At this time, the Navy had also asked original systems to update their arena commander training simulation based on the observed actions of the aliens to closely and accurately represent the dangers of facing these elite ships. Thus, the Vandal Swarm simulation was created. Since the Battle of Oberon II, raids throughout the system have gone down quite a lot in the recent years but it's worth noting that the Vandal Kingship has not been spotted since the first attack. It makes you wonder, is the Retribution deterrence enough, or is the Vandal lurking just out of sight once again building their fleets to counter the UEE and strike back?